Have you got one of these? This is an organization box for my first 3D printer ever, and it has holes for all the tools that I needed at the time. Unfortunately, over time, some of these tools I didn't end up needing, new tools that I started to use more often just don't have a place in it, and this became irrelevant. But what if there was a way to make a storage box that not only had what you needed right now, but would continue to have all the tools and spaces that you needed in the future because it was infinitely reconfigurable? Well, I'm introducing now Print-A-Block Store-A-Blocks. Store-A-Blocks aren't the first reconfigurable storage system that you can make with 3D printing, but it has some advantages over the existing systems, I think. First of all, there's no additional hardware required, meaning you don't need magnets or fasteners or anything like that. You can 3D print everything that you need. Store-A-Blocks are also reconfigurable on the fly, and because they aren't beholden to any sort of grid system, you can make them fully 3D, move parts of them higher and fill them in with some regular blocks or use some other blocks sideways. We can do this however we want. There are no rules of laying things out when it comes to store blocks And the main body of most of the store blocks are just different sized bins, so you don't need to have custom containers for your specific material. Just find the bin that's big enough to hold whatever you want and then use that one. Not to say that there aren't custom store blocks for specific use cases, and it's also super easy to make your own if you want, because printer blocks are super easy to edit. Of course, I do my edits in Blender, but lots of people use Tinkercad, or you can use any modeling software. It's an open system. I've even replaced a Blockfinity organizer that I made for my Carbon X1 with a custom store block solution that works even better. <laughs> So let me give you a quick example of how easy it is to make a custom storage solution using Stora Blocks. These are the tools that came with my Creality K1, and let's use storage blocks to make a better storage system for them. So to begin with, we're going to need a piece of paper, some calipers to do some measuring, and a pen, and then we're going to take the items from the box and measure their dimensions. These are the flush cutters that come with just about every 3D printer. I'm going to leave them in the box for measuring purposes, and I just want to draw something on my paper that kind of represents the dimensions that we want. It doesn't have to be pretty. It can just be one of those basic boxes that you drew back in school like that. And then I'm going to use my calipers and measure those dimensions. So the width of it is 55 point some odd. We'll say that it needs to be 56. The narrowness of it is, what do you say, 12, 13, 13. That's all right. And the height of it. Now storage blocks come in usually about three heights. There's 28, 60, and 90 millimeters. Which one's going to be the best for this one? Uh, you know, honestly, yeah, let me just make sure that it didn't recenter it. But 60 should just about do it. You want it to be about halfway, so 60 is fine. We'll, we'll say 60 for this one. Then, let's see about this wrench here. The wrench needs to be uh, 7 wide, 6, 7 wide there. I'm just going to draw another box like this. Oh, and on this one I'm going to draw a picture of the flush cutters. That is the word that looks like a W, and we're going to go with it. So, 7 wide for this. And how thick does it need to be? Uh, 25, 30, 25. Let's say 26. Just give us a little bit of space to work with, and that's where the wrench goes. Next is this scraper thingy. Uh, so we need to be about 30. And then width-wise, yeah, we got, what, 3, 4 millimeters there. Metal grease, and it needs to be about 18. Height-wise, uh, 60 might work. Next up, we have this glue stick. Glue stick also round. Needs to be, oh, looks like about 25, 60. Yeah, 60 fine. All right, next up, we've got this pusher tool and then these bags of tools that we have here. Now, I'm not going to bother with making an individual container for all of these. I think these two can just go into whatever would fit this. So I'm just going to say, you know, times two of those for that guy. And then we've got these tools here. We get a bunch of Allen wrenches and this pushing tool. Now, in storage blocks, there are some, uh, there's a storage block that has holes in it for very small things. And there's one of them that has four holes, and there's one of them that has 12 holes, and then there's one of them that has a lot more holes. I We obviously have the four Allen tools, the one pusher, so we're going to need more than four, so we're going to need to go for the 12 holes minimum on that one, and that's fine. A little bit of extra room to expand in the future, not a bad thing. But what about these other tools right here, these other leftover screws and junctions and parts that we probably don't want to lose, but we don't really have a solution for. I could get, just get a small bin, that might work, but instead, printer blocks, storage blocks also have storage drawers, and there's a mini drawer that I think would be, uh, you know, appropriate for this, and that should be everything. That should cover it, so now I need to figure out which storage blocks will fit these. So looking at the file list for storage blocks, 
You'll notice that after the bins, there are three numbers. Those three numbers represent the short side, the long side, and the height of each of these bins. So first, we're gonna to need to find a bin that's at least 13 by 55 by 60. Looking at the list, it looks like that's going to be 976H. 8976H is 23 by 25 by 60, which means it's gonna be a little bit wider than we need, but it will at least hold this. Moving on to the wrench. We need something that's at least seven by 26 by 40. That is going to be 975F. Looking at the scraper, we're going to need at least four by 20. That's gonna be again in the 975 range. But let's see, we only need it 60, so that's gonna be E. The 19 by 19 is going to be a 976, and I think it's going to be B because we only need it to be 60 tall. And then the glue stick here is also going to be, no, it's going to be 977 B because we need it just a little bit bigger to hold that glue stick in there. And then we're going to need the small holder with all of the holes in it. That's 992B. That B gives us the double wide. And then we need a mini drawer. And so that is going to be 980. And we're going to need both A and B as well as a knob for that, which is a separate STL. So with all of those in place, let's put those together, throw them at the 3D printer and see what comes out. And there are those prints all complete. Now to start with, we need to assemble the drawer. The drawer comes in two parts plus the handle. So you look for the little notch in the top and you just slide part B into part A like that. We're also going to need some printer block connectors. Let me grab a handful of those. There we go. And we'll just put two of those printer block connectors into the handle here. Pop, pop. So satisfying. And then pop that onto the drawer. And the drawer is now complete and ready to use. Now let's see how these individual parts all fit the tools that they were made for. To start with, let's grab the flush cutters. So the flush cutters go into this box. This was a box for it. And I could put them in like this, but I don't necessarily want to poke my hand while I'm using it. So I'm going to put them pointy side down. And that seems to work pretty darn good. It's a little bit loose, but it's at least big enough for the flush cutter. So I'm going to call that good. Next, let's try the wrench. Now the wrench, fits in this big tall bad boy right here. And if I put it in, sure enough, it fits. Now the one downside is it is a little bit wobbly and I don't like the way that it shifts its weight when it does that. When this one wobbles, it really doesn't change much, but this one wobbles quite a bit. So what I can do for this one is I can make a custom insert. I know the internal dimension, so I can go into just anything, Tinkercad even, make a block that's that size and then cut out a hole for what I want and then print that out. And I printed this one out laying down because of course I did. Slide it in there and then this will, oh, I did it. Okay, I did it too thin for the big side, but the small side fits in there and it doesn't wobble as much. That holds its weight a little bit better. So that's an option. Customizing is certainly an option. We've got this piece that holds all of those tools as well as the filament pusher pokey thing. So that one's a success. I decided last minute, instead of doing two of these really big ones that I do two of the slightly smaller ones, because this one was just for these spare tools that were sitting around and we really only had two of them. So that'll work great for that. This one right here was for the metal grease. And honestly, I don't think that that needs an adapter. That's great. This one, however, was for the glue. And it's, yeah, it's got lots of space in it. It's really, really kind of big. So once again, went in and made a little adapter that fits in there. That way I can get fancy with it if I want. Or I could just use the standard ones. It's fine. The drawer is fine. And then last but not least, the scraper thingy goes in there, holds in it perfectly fine. So now that we've got all of our tools in a nice, neat little connector, or a nice, neat little boxes, the question is, how do you want to organize your boxes? So one thing that we could do is as long as none of them are wider than this piece here, we could potentially just put them all in a straight line and then put them actually inside the body of the K1. They would fit that way. Now, one problem is that the drawer is too wide for that. We could potentially stand the drawer up, but really the drawer just has the, you know, leftover screws and stuff that we're, we're kind of holding on to until we figure out something else to do with those. So for now, I'd say maybe take those out of the mix. And there we have all of the tools that we need and we can just put that in the K1. Or we can bring back that drawer and we can actually take some of these shorter ones here and stack them on top of it like this. 
Uh, let's see, the wrench. I don't know how often I'm going to use the wrench. Maybe I'll hide that one in the back there. The the flush cutters I use all the time. So I'm going to put those right up front, but those guys can hide back there. I don't really care about them that much. The glue stick, I don't actually use the glue stick that much, nor do I use the metal grease that much, but we can put them right there. I don't like how it's leaving a little gap up front here. Maybe I'll try to get creative and figure out a way to fill that in. But once I have everything the way that I want it, it's just a matter of bringing in some connectors, putting the connectors in the appropriate holes to connect them, and turning this all into one giant holder for all of your tools. Now that that's all together, I wanted to show you how stable it all was, how it all just holds together without any additional hardware. That is the power of Printablock. Now Printablock does come with these little flat panels that you could you could potentially print one out big enough and then put your thing on there and connect it with connectors if you wanted the additional stability. But honestly, that's not even necessary. And then once you're done, once you've built your custom holder for these tools, I would have no problem with you uploading just the individual parts that you needed for this particular build and the instructions for how many to print and if you make any you know specialty adapters for things upload those as well and put them out there so that people can when they have their own 3d printers make little organizers specific for the print parts that come with that 3d printer i'd be totally okay with that i'd be excited if you did that in fact so there you have it ditch your old organization system and get yourself some print -a block store -a blocks I want to thank you very much for watching, and I want to remind you that you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself, and if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.